Hello and welcome back to another video. We have September's Scrawler Box fresh through the letterbox and let's just get into it. If you want to know more about Scrawler Box, go to www.scrawlerbox.com and you can find out a bit about these boxes. So straight off the bat, this box felt um, quite a nice healthy weight and wasn't too squishy. So there must be some good goodies in here. Feels very thick. Um, before we get into supplies, let's have a look at the front of this zine. So it looks like we've got some sort of marker, something that is going to be streaky. So not everyone's favourite. So probably a water-based marker, I would presume. Let's have a look at the featured artwork. Oh, very nice. Look at that. That's lovely. I love the colours on that. Very nice. Very, very nice. So this is the featured artist, Brianna Smith, a freelance artist originally from Southern California who has now established her creative roots in the city of Phoenix, Arizona, with a lifelong passion for artistic expression and an insatiable love for coffee. Very good. So if you want to keep reading, just pause the video here. Apologies, our puppy clearly wanted some attention there. So if you want to read a bit more about this artist, please pause the video there and have a little look and I will be looking at their um website and instagram at the bottom there after this segment of the video so let's get into the supplies a little bit more oh interesting so not water-based markers at all but acrylic markers very interesting okay so our sweet for this box is a fruit salad do you know what i've grown up with people loving fruit salads i personally don't think i've ever eaten a fruit salad so i'm interested to see what that tastes like i will put up my um sweet rating up here but i obviously won't include a sour rating because it's not meant to be sour so you will see what i thought of that then we have the scroller sticker which is just a segment of that artwork very nice okay so as we have experienced for the last two boxes, we do not have a slip telling us what is in the box anymore. It's just this double page spread. So we will open that there. Okay, firstly, we have the Uni Pin um, Fine Liner. This is, who's this by? Well, Uni Pin, obviously. <laughs> so it is in the size 0.9. So a, a good healthy side, not too thin, not too thick. Very nice. I've actually rate these liners. I've had these before. Very, very nice. Then on to this pencil here, which, unless I'm going crazy, isn't on this, isn't on this spread. Are we meant to be having this? Is this an extra? I don't know. But anyway, just from looking at it. It is the Derwent Sketching Pencil in 2B, my favourite um, thickness of and weight of pencil. Very nice. It's a very nice looking pencil. It's, it feels very professional and nice and round and nice to hold. But again, not on there, so I wonder why. Um, and then the main supply in the box, we have the Frisk acrylic markers we have 12 water-based highly pigmented vibrant acrylic markers so they are water-based but they're acrylic not not just um your average marker so very nice we have yellow orange pink red purple blue green brown black white gold and silver so we've got some metallics in there as well very good let's take millions of years to open this okay okay oh Okay, it's very rare we get a full set of something. It's usually just one or two. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so I believe this says we have to pump them. Yes, we do. So they're not pre-pumped, but look at that. That's a really nice weight of um, nib there. It's not going to be too thick for doing design and, and, and line work and stuff. Very nice. I like the range of colours. They're going to be very interesting. Okay, and then the paper we have is some A5 Bristol board. I don't feel like you can ever have enough Bristol board. It's just so beautifully smooth. So this is really good for alcohol markers as well, which I believe we received in the last box or the box before. So if you enjoyed those, keep some of this Bristol board for it because it'll be perfect for blending. Um, very nice. 
Um, let's have a flick through of the rest of this zine. So, oh, this is very thick paper, it's a bit thicker than usual. Um, so this is a little bit more about the artist, so I will be reading that off camera. Some scrawler tips and things to try again, and as always, I will read these as we swatch the supplies. Some further scrawler, scrawler tips and artist advice, again, we'll read those when we swatch. And then the scrawler gallery is featuring artwork from um two boxes prior to this one um if you if you hashtag scrawler challenge so this was from number 95 where the theme was quest so oh very nice i think we had the viviva color sheets for this didn't we the cut the pans the colored pans some lovely artwork look at this wow that dog's amazing beautiful there's some beautiful artwork for that one very very nice very nice um and then the scroller top three. Oh, lovely god look at this character design that's stunning beautiful 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 and then the scroller extra is about the animal kingdom um because our scroller challenge is claws and paws interesting that's well within my wheelhouse um to do the claws and paws so i feel like we can really utilize these supplies very very well and i'm interested to use these colors in a bit more of an abstract sense and less well a bit more surreal rather than uh, real realism there with these colors but they look very interesting and i'm interested to see what these pigments are like because from first glance, they definitely need a mix-up in those barrels. Um, so I'm very, very interested. Very interested. So let's get to swatching the supplies. I will read those hints and tips, and we will see what we can come up with for claws and paws. So for the scroll tips and things to try for this box, we have a light hand and a wet nib is always key with paint pens on paper. Keep your marker nib saturated by giving it a good shake regularly. Give it a couple of pumps to keep the nib wet. Filling in large areas, it's best to work in small sections, making sure the paint is fully covering the areas as you go. Try not to go over the same area too much as this will cause the paper to start peeling. You can also fill in backgrounds or larger areas by emptying the paint out onto a palette and using a paintbrush. Layer this on thick, these pens are opaque so you can go back over once dry to add details and outlines. Clean lines, masking tape is a good way to help you cre create clean sharp lines and shapes like geometric patterns or silhouettes. Stippling, dab the, nab the nib lightly onto the page to create a series of dots, push harder to create bigger dots, the further your area, your separate, you separate your dots the larger the area will appear. This is a fun technique to use for shading too, as the more dots the closer together they are, the more solid the area will become. Let it drip, lay your page flat, then pump the marker onto the page to get lots of lovely paint out. Hold it vertically and watch it drip down. For extra drippiness, flick your now wet pen at your page for some fun splash-like effects. Try not to paint your desk. Texture, experiment with different household items or other supplies in the box to create some visual interest to your work. Tissue, scrunch up tissue and dab it onto the paint whilst it's still wet. You can use the tissue supplied inside your scroller box. An old large paintbrush you can dab onto the page for organic dots, sweep across the page for ex expressive wipes. It might look help to look at your reference as a series of blocks and shapes. Then you can use your paint pens to work in blocks of colour, letting it fully dry, then going back in to fit, add details. The final step will be outlining with white highlights. Blending. If you prefer a blended look, you can do this, but you have to work fast using a damp paint brush. And while it's still wet, go back in with your other colours using small circular motions to mix the paint into each other. So some really good... Uh, tips there there's they're quite generic i think it's a lot of um playing around and obviously swatching i always highly recommend swatching your supplies out um, whenever you get them because you want to know how it reacts on the paper how they react with one another um etc etc so when i did my swatching i just swatched out each color i didn't really 
do anything major in terms of um, mixing the colours or seeing how they lay over one another and I think that was a mistake on my part because I definitely used a few areas um, and did them a little bit too thick and that definitely pilled my paper so it's always worth swatching and swatching thoroughly don't be lazy like me <laughs> um, and do it properly so onto this artwork so my inspiration for paws and claws had to be my new puppy and my cat it just was perfect and um, I've recently opened up an Instagram account for them called Freddie and Mabel um, that has <laughs> it has taken up quite a lot of my time recently um, I'm a bit obsessed with it but um, there's a profile picture that I made that was half of Mabel and half of Freddie and I just thought that's a perfect a perfect reference for this and it's my own reference um, and I don't really paint my cat very often and obviously I've not paint, managed, had time to paint Mabel yet so I thought this was a perfect opportunity to do that um, so that's what I did I used that as a reference um, and initially I really wanted to kind of blend these colours and, and almost use them like paint I really thought that would be the direction I went and in hindsight that was a bad direction um, I think, and I quickly, I quickly learned that that was a bad direct, uh, direction to go whilst doing this, but I definitely shouldn't have gone straight into doing what I usually do and treating them like acrylic paints. Um, I should have treated them like individual colours of block colours um, because that's what acrylic paint pens are. They're, they're more used for the graphic style. You can use them for blend like the scrawler Hints and Tips said. You can use them on a palette, you can blend them together. Um, but you have to work very quickly, they do dry very quick. Um, and that is when I noticed the pilling the most. So I started to add um, some silver to this to kind of lighten up and create that lighter grey effect that um, black cats tend to have. Um, I know I know, black fur is very very complex and it has lots of colour, but we're, we're working very graphically here. So I wanted to brighten up the black and create a bit of a greyer colour, um, almost like there's highlights on there. And so I used the, the, the silver and I used it over the top and it was way more pigmented than the black. It laid up, I couldn't even pull the black off that pen there. Um, so I kind of laid it on top and whilst that was dry, I went back in with the black, which was great. It was blending it out, it was blending it fine, but it was starting to peel, especially in areas where I added a lot of paint ink on there so just something to bear in mind if you are using this box it will um peel your paper if you add too many layers so i do suggest working in a more graphic style and i know for some of us that do more realism it's quite difficult to work in that style but this box is definitely pushing that and i think it's very good to lean into that and push yourself into doing this because that's what i had to do and it you know i'm really pleased with the result um but yeah that's all i was doing with this was layering up this silver on the black the eye was the yellow and green i stippled it on together and again blended it with the stippling which worked quite well i'm glad i didn't keep that too graphic i think it would have looked a little bit weird with the rest of the style of this um but yeah that's the premise of what i was doing on freddie's little face here um like i mentioned i don't really paint freddie very often because of his very very dark fur i find it really difficult to paint him and i think i've not really given my chance i've tried a few times with paint and it's not really worked out so i definitely need to use my inking style and do that because i think i could definitely um create those lights and shadows with my inking that i usually do so i do need to do that at some point but moving on to mabel here so again her eye had this very yellowy green tone um so i just did that on the slight on the small bit but you couldn't really see it in the reference photo very much it was mainly black so um I definitely just added that tiny little bit of colour and then went in with the blacks and the, the lights and darks to create the eyeball and the iris and the highlights on that, um, which I think turned out really nice. I do think the eyeball is slightly too small. I have... In the past for my GSSEs, I painted our family spaniel, which who's called Candy, she's past now, but I painted her and I had the same problem. I always painted their eyes a bit too small and I'm not really sure why. Um, but the eye on, on Mabel definitely turned out way better than the eye on Freddy. I think I must have gotten into my groove after doing Freddy, so um, that's good. Maybe I should have started with Mabel first, I don't know. Um, but I went in there, finished the eyeball, then added a few of the dark areas that I know are very dark like the bend in the ear where the face is shadowing it um, and a few of the curved uh, curls and um, the nose area I darkened up with this black and then I pulled out the kind of brownie colour I can't remember what the brown's called now 
but I went in with that and it was quite a juicy pen um, <laughs> so I found it quite difficult to keep my lines um, how I've just done with the black there and so I um, I basically filled it in with leaving very minimal white space um, which I'm not sure if that was the move or the call to go for um, but it, it, I think I think it worked because her face is predominantly this um, tan colour um, and then I kind of just used the black blended in a little bit um, with some white to create the darks and the highlights and I think that worked really nicely um, and I really like the, the paint pens. I have seen a lot of people saying that their paint pens ran dry quite quickly. Um, personally for me, and I must have been the lucky one, my pens were very, very moist. The only time they dried out was when I was trying to blend too heavily and I was absorbing and eating up the paper and I think um, it dried the pen nib out. But once I gave it a couple of shakes and a pump, it was back to being juicy as usual. And they've, they've been very juicy for me. So I hope some of you resolve your dry um, markers and... and I don't know whether you'll get a replacement or, or something else, but I hope that you manage to sort that because they are actually very nice pens and I really rate the pigmentation of them. They're very bright, they're very colourful, they lay down very matte and, f and thick and juicy. They're just very, very nice pens and I highly recommend. I don't know how much they run um, if you were to buy them retail cost, um, but I do feel like this box is worth its money at the moment um, and... I, I just really very very much enjoyed it and I really enjoyed the subject as well I think it fit perfectly with paws and claws so please let me know what your thoughts are let me know what you did for paws and claws I'd really love to know um, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this I'm going to leave you to watch the last little snippets of this video um, and I hope you've enjoyed so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one Bye bye